The Ford Maverick isn't exactly new anymore, but it has managed to stay new Z since it debuted for 2022. It was the most affordable hybrid on the market when it was new, and of course it also made waves as a unibody pickup. We're testing the 2024 Maverick XLT today, which is the middle trim, and it is not the hybrid. Yes, many of us do think of the Maverick that way, but the big news for 2024 is that the hybrid is now the option and the EcoBoost engine is now the standard. Cliff reviewed the same trim and powertrain, but with the Tremor package last year, and Matt reviewed the base trim with the hybrid back when it was new. So we've really got your Maverick bases covered on this channel, and we would love it if you would subscribe. So not much has changed out here. There are two new colors, but this is not one of them. This is Atlas Blue. It's still a sort of friendly looking little truck with its relatively high and narrow grille and the crossbar connecting the headlights. That bar is gray because this is the XLT. It would be black on the XL or silver on the Lariat. The XLT comes with wiper activated headlights and this one also has the FX4 off-road package. These 17-inch aluminum wheels come with the FX4 package as well. Those steelies that Matt described vividly in his video. These look like something you'd pull out of a salvage yard to mount your snow tires on. They're like the Maverick's way of hanging a sign around its neck that says, I'm here to work. Are still standard on the base trim, so check that out for more. If this were the Lariat, we would have body-colored door handles. It also comes with bright 18-inch wheels. This one has the XLT luxury package, which now includes the modular hard drop-in bed liner. It also includes LED lights in the bed. I really like how the license plate is kind of off-center here. It gives it a bit of a jaunty touch, and there are more cheeky touches inside, so let's check those out. We're starting in the back here because I wanted to show you how easy it is to flip these seats up and it opens up a really good amount of storage underneath each of them. They also fold down really easily. Whoop. There we go. The seats are squishier than you might expect. A lot of seats these days are kind of hard. I also really like this gray and blue interior and the orange contrast stitching. Even though I'm generally a fan of materials that can wipe off, I actually really don't hate this, and Elliot really likes it, and he's the one with the eye. Yeah, I really think it looks like a nice pair of jeans. I'm a big fan. There you go. And we actually have three inches more legroom in here than we would in the Toyota Tacoma. Ford has been making cheap interiors, and sorry, but I can be real with you guys, right? They've been making cheap interiors for years now, and they have finally nailed it with the Maverick. I love that it doesn't feel like they're trying to trick me, like maybe I won't notice if it's hard plastic. They're leaning into it. These are affordable materials, but this is a really good execution. They haven't tried to hide it with these bold color choices. I mean, this entire dash is clearly plastic. I will say the feel and kind of the sound, if you knock on it or scrape it inside the door card, takes me right back to childhood because it sounds and feels exactly like one of those blue and orange little tyke slides. So definitely not premium materials, but they also really don't suck. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that my driver's seat has power adjustment. That comes with the XLT luxury package, which also adds seat heating and this soft vinyl steering wheel cover, which is a really good example of what I'm talking about with the materials. You know, it's obviously not leather, but it's still soft. It feels comfortable. It's much nicer than the hard plastic steering wheel cover I had on a WRX that I tested recently. So I will take the soft touch. And we do see some similar design language to say the F-150's interior, some familiar elements, although this climate control is straight out of the Escape and the Bronco Sport. I like the rubberized trays in the center console and I really like this well-positioned dedicated spot for your phone. That's really nice. You can still kind of see it. And check this out. The key does one of these and they've included a dedicated spot to store it. What will they think of next? As I said, the two and a half liter hybrid powertrain is now the optional setup. So that makes 191 horsepower. It comes with a CVT, a continuously variable transmission, and it's only available with front wheel drive. 
The truck that I'm driving today is equipped with the EcoBoost 2 liter Turbo 4, so this makes 250 horsepower and it comes with an 8 speed automatic transmission. You are going to feel the difference between the automatic and the CVT because the automatic, of course, has real gears and sometimes it misses them or it goes to the wrong one and you can feel that. Like in an acceleration situation, I've had it go one, two, three, four, and then kind of realize oh, we didn't need to get to four and sort of clumsily shift back down to three at moments I wasn't expecting. So every once in a while you get that feeling. This one is all wheel drive, which is a $2,200 option, and that puts its fuel economy at 25 miles per gallon. So only very slightly less than the front wheel drive with the EcoBoost. The hybrid, of course, does much better. That gets 37 miles per gallon combined. Now this doesn't really drive like a truck. It shares a chassis with the Bronco Sport and feels a lot like the Bronco Sport or like a crossover. It's got a good ride. I was actually a little surprised at how comfortable it was going over speed bumps in my neighborhood. It handles pretty nicely, generally a crossover -y feel in spite of the somewhat heavier steering. And as a general rule, I do like heavier steering in a truck. It's a little bit weird to have that paired with the crossover driving experience because so many crossovers have such over boosted really, really light steering these days, but it's okay. It's kind of, kind of lets you know you're driving something utilitarian. Crossover characteristics aside, this does have some light duty, or maybe we should say extra light duty truck things. Like for example, flipping through the drive modes, I don't see sport anywhere, but I do have tow haul. I have mud and ruts. I have sand in addition to slippery. So those feel like truck things. I also have a trailer brake controller down here and the Maverick can tow up to 4,400 pounds if it's equipped with the 4K tow package. It also has a max payload capacity of 1,500 pounds. So that's pretty close to the 5,000 pound max tow we see from properly equipped Honda Ridgelines and Hyundai Santa Cruzes. And this does have notably better gas mileage than either of those. This 8-inch touchscreen is standard and it's pretty basic. The operating system is pretty basic. A lot of the time, if I'm not in Apple CarPlay, I can kind of forget that this is full color and then you get into certain screens and you're like, green? How did you get there? That's kind of a surprise. Now, I actually don't hate this sort of bluish gray, almost monochrome look. It reminds me of this old Mac that we had when I was a kid. I'm dating myself, but this computer was old even then. It had the little square screen. It was kind of clunky. Really just kind of takes me back and makes me want to play Brickle. We've got one USB-C and one USB-A port up here and the same at the back of the center console for the rear seat passengers. I like that the driver information display is symmetrical. So we've got the two analog gauges, physical gauges, one on each side, and then this rectangle, that's the digital display in the middle. So on a lot of vehicles where it's not fully digital, you'll see it 50-50 or 60-40, and that can be a little bit weird, especially in certain lights. So this feels a lot more thoughtful. Now other optional features include Sirius XM and an eight speaker B&O sound system. Those are standard on the Lariat. Safety features are where I really start to feel like this is more of a truck than a crossover because on a lot of family vehicles, crossovers included, advanced driver assistance systems are starting to be more and more expected, just standard. That's not true of truck lineups. And on the Maverick, if you want something like the blind spot information system with cross traffic alert, if you want the lane keeping system, you're going to need the $650 Ford Copilot 360 package to get that on this trim. Those things are standard on Lariat. Same is true of adaptive cruise control, standard on Lariat, only available on lower trims. Now, standard safety features across the lineup include forward collision warning, pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection, automatic emergency braking, and of course, the required backup camera. The 2024 Ford Maverick starts just under $24,000 before destination and handling fees for the base XL trim. So pricing has changed a lot since it first hit the market for 2022, even if not a lot else has changed. Of course, the news here is that the hybrid powertrain is now a $1,500 extra cost option. For me, considering the savings in fuel over the length of ownership, that would still be a no brainer, but since you can't get all wheel drive with it, might be a deal breaker for some people. Let us know where you fall on that. 
Now the one that we've seen today stickers for $34,735 and that puts it right under the starting price of the Lariat, but it does have pretty much every single package you can get thrown at it. The 2024 Hyundai Santa Cruz starts at $26,900 before destination, and that's really the closest competitor because the Honda Ridgeline, although it is unibody, is substantially larger than this. It shares a platform with the Honda Odyssey, and its near $40,000 starting price reflects that. So back to the Santa Cruz. We already said that it has a higher max tow than the Maverick, but the Maverick, even with the gas-powered only engine, still gets better fuel economy. This also has more legroom front and rear with the EcoBoost engine. Headroom is about the same between the two. Where the Santa Cruz really shines is, of course, its best-in-class warranty. What you're going to get with the Maverick is a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty and a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. And then there's the comparison between the styling. This looks like a truck. The Santa Cruz looks like a Hyundai. This is our third Maverick video for this channel, and I'm the third presenter to cover it for Cargrews. And we've also got videos on the Honda Ridgeline and the Hyundai Santa Cruz, every other truck you can imagine. That's what we're doing here, so please make sure you're subscribed to this channel so we can keep doing it. And then head over to cargrews.com to shop for a great deal.